Three weeks from tonight, we should know who won the race for the White House. And that means right now, it's full steam ahead for both campaigns. President Trump and Joe Biden have aggressive schedules leading up to Election Day in hopes of winning over any uncommitted voters. Earlier today, I talked with ABC News political director Rick Klein about what to expect these next three weeks. Rick, thanks for joining us tonight. We are now three weeks away from Election Day. President Trump is now back on the campaign trail, holding a rally last night in Florida. Joe Biden campaigned yesterday in Ohio. Both campaigns have busy and aggressive schedules. What are both campaigns focusing on right now, and what can we expect over the next three weeks? Well, yeah, two points I'd make. One is that the territory that, uh, that they're fighting on is almost entirely Trump territory from 2016. There are very few opportunities the president has to go on offense. He's mostly trying to hold down uh, his base, uh, and, and that includes uh, states in the upper Midwest as well as uh, through the South and the Sun Belt. And, and that, I think, is why you see the focus of the travel. Uh, Joe Biden is on offense a lot more places uh, than, than President Trump. And, and back to the point about the base, uh, this really is not an election about undecided voters, about people who even now or have not decided who, who they would support. Uh, but there are still uncommitted voters who might not be convinced to vote at all, or might be sitting it out, might be voting third party, and need that extra boost of motivation, that, that little extra kick uh, to get them out. And that's why the candidates are focusing on them in the states that they are. A new ABC News Washington Post poll has Joe Biden with a double digit lead right now over President Trump, 54 to 42 percent. Are those numbers one of the reasons President Trump wanted to get back out on the campaign trail so soon after being treated for the coronavirus? Yeah, I mean, you lost a week of campaigning uh, due to his illness and was back out a lot faster than I think um, almost anyone, including medical experts, thought was uh, was likely. Uh, and that, that, I think, explains it in part. I think he also draws energy, enthusiasm from being out there. Uh, he can draw big crowds. He likes to point out they're bigger crowds than Joe Biden's. Of course, they're crowds that don't respect social distancing or enforced mask wearing in the same ways. But even s set that aside, he has always engendered enormous enthusiasm and was able to continue to do that. And I don't think he could have seen a way to close this campaign without a lot of travel, a lot of rallies. Uh, they are a, a signature part of what President Trump brings, uh, and I think we'll see a whole lot of them in the last couple of weeks. Supreme Court confirmation hearings are taking place this week. Is the president hoping that that will be a boost to his campaign? I, I look, I think that the, the, the opening that emerged from Ruth Bader Ginsburg's death a few weeks ago was a political opportunity that he jumped at. Uh, he clear, clearly wanted to fill that seat very, very quickly. Uh, right now, the push is to do this now, which is three weeks before the election. We've never in our history had a Supreme Court justice confirmed this close to a presidential election. Uh, and the reason they're changing that is twofold. One is, I think, solidifying the gains for Republicans. Um, it, it's a major talking point to be able to say that you've delivered. And, and I think it is a motivating factor as well, that uh, conservatives have long felt like the Supreme Court has not been in their favor. They have this historic opportunity to reshape the court with a third selection by President Trump uh, to get Amy Coney Barrett confirmed and serving on the Supreme Court before the election would be an achievement. And one of those achievements that Republicans would sure like to be able to bring to voters. Yeah, let's talk about the debates, because the second presidential debate that was scheduled for this week has been canceled. Joe Biden will instead take part in a town hall hosted by ABC News, and President Trump's campaign has said that he will continue holding his rallies. Has a presidential debate ever been canceled before, and what do you think that this means for future debates? Yeah, not, not since 1980 have you had um, a, a situation where any of the, the scheduled debates um, were, were just outright canceled. Uh, there were a lot of complicating factors this time, but it's really uh, the Commission on Presidential Debates has been around since 1988. And since then, we've never seen anything like this. Uh, I think even after, even before the scheduling issues uh, last time, I mean, people talked about that first presidential debate, what an outright mess it was. The future of the debates was in a little bit of, uh, of jeopardy. Um, I, I, the expectation is that there will be a final presidential debate uh, next week in Tennessee. Um, if that goes forward, then maybe it solidifies. But you know, debates are always just as good as the candidates who, who want to commit to them. And often um, there, are, there, there are candidates that either commit or don't commit based on that self-interest. Uh, to me, it's been a great tradition to know that you're going to have those three presidential, the one vice presidential debate every, every cycle. Um, it's a shame that uh, we're, we're, get, we're losing out on some of that. It's a shame for the voting public. Um, but I know I'm excited about that, uh, that town hall that we're going to host with Vice President Biden in a couple of days, similar to the one we did with President Trump last month. Absolutely. Well, another big race everyone is watching is one here at home, the Kentucky Senate race between Mitch McConnell and Amy McGrath. There's a lot at stake in that race. How do you see that race playing out? 
Yeah, I mean, look, on today's facts, it's hard to see how Mitch McConnell um, it, it stumbles and, and loses that race. Uh, unlike a whole lot of national Republicans uh, and, and across the country right now who are in, in real political fights, um, it doesn't seem like Amy McGrath has been able to, to puncture uh, McConnell's main talking points. Uh, and, and, and really, because Kentucky is such a red state, uh, there's no indication that, uh, that Mitch McConnell's seat is actually in jeopardy. Uh, and I think he is someone that took that Supreme Court vacancy and ran with it. Um, he made no bones about the fact that he was willing to confirm Amy Coney Barrett, despite the stance that he took under roughly cir similar circumstances further out from the election four years ago when President Obama made a pick. And I think that is a, a key to understanding Mitch McConnell. Uh, he, he knows where his base is. He recognizes that, uh, that uh, there was really no downside for him politically in being as strong and all in as he could be, particularly on the issue of the Supreme Court. Uh, and that may be one of the reasons that at least so far he appears to be ducking the fate that might bedevil a whole bunch of his colleagues. I mean, control of the Senate is in doubt. Uh, Mitch McConnell, you know, said the other day that, um, uh, that, 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 that defeating him would, would almost certainly mean that uh, a senator from New York is the majority leader referring to Chuck Schumer. Uh, he, it's very easy to see a scenario where Mitch McConnell wins, but the Republicans lose control of the Senate and he is the minority leader anyway. So uh, that, those are the stakes. Um, obviously, there are significant headwinds for Republicans this year, but uh, McConnell against McGrath so far has not really uh, risen to the top of the competitive list. All right, a lot of great insight tonight. ABC News political director Rick Klein, thanks so much for being with us tonight.